By the Iron Age, wheeled carts were in use for transport of goods and people. In the late 19th century, the power of exploding petrol was harnessed. <laughs> And by 1886, Benz and Daimler were able to build the first practical motor cars using the new internal combustion engine. This strange new invention often caused havoc when it appeared, and it was not universally welcome. On top of their cars, pioneer motorists had no protection from the weather. Motoring fashion gave some protection from summer dust. Oh no, it's cold enough. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if the safety bar is closed, please remain in your seat and the ride will restart soon. However, if the bar opens, please leave your seats immediately. Public and parliamentary reaction to the car was often hostile. From 1896 until 1904, the speed limit was 12 miles an hour. Police speed traps were commonplace. But despite this hostility, many affluent families discovered the delights of touring the British countryside by cars. Only the rich could afford the expensive hand-built cars of Edwardian times. Craftsmen used skills learned in the building of horse-drawn carriages. But it was racing that encouraged the technical development of the motor car. Racing innovations were adapted to improve the family car. But the building of cheaper cars awaited the development of mass production techniques. In England, Henry Ford led the way in 1914 with his Manchester assembly line. And then came the war, with motor vehicles finding a new role behind the lines. Yeah. 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 In the post-war years, less expensive cars gradually appeared on the market. <coughs> And by the 1930s, leisure motoring was available to a much wider public. Young men and girls in smart MGs, families in Fords, Morrises and Austins, and Sharabangs on works outings. As traffic grew and regulations multiplied, motoring organisations were there to help. In wartime, private cars saw service on the home front. The post-war motor industry presented a mixture of old and new models to a nation hungry for cars. 
The Ford Escort established an outstanding reputation in rallying. In the 60s, the Mini took the world by storm and became the car for while the Land Rover became the workhorse of the world. In the 60s, design was led by fashion. While constructors pushed cars to the limit. Acceleration, the fastest car, <coughs> the most expensive vehicle. Today's cars bring freedom to the family and with electronic control, are cleaner, safer, more comfortable, and more reliable. But what of the future? Will we have flying cars, hover cars, or even walking cars? Who knows? Thank you for joining us. In